week, the Salt Lake Tribune and the Deseret News ended their joint operating agreement, which allowed the two newspapers to share one facility to print their papers in order to save money. With the decision, both papers announced they would only print weekly and instead post their daily reporting online. Joining us now is the former executive editor of the Salt Lake Tribune, Jennifer Napier Pierce. Jennifer ran the Tribune from 2016 until August of this year and oversaw a number of changes at the paper, which we will get to shortly. Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's such a pleasure to be here with you, Rosie. Thank you for the invite. No problem, Jennifer. So neither the Salt Lake Tribune nor the Deseret News are going to print a daily edition. So what does this mean for news in Utah? Well, what it means is not that much, really. I mean, the, the vast majority of readers are already online, right? I mean, how many people have a, a print edition delivered to their doorstep? It's just a fraction of the readers that come to sltrib.com. So uh, the vast majority of people will not notice a difference. I think it's, it's much more of a, a nostalgic look. You know, for those of us who are fans of the print edition, it's a sad day, it's a sad realization, but uh, newspapers across the country have been making these uh, hard choices. Do you sustain the print habit or do you continue to support the newsroom? And I think, you know, uh, 10 times out of 10, the journalism comes first and you have to make these hard cho choices about the delivery system. But really on uh, the news product side, uh, consumers are not gonna see a lot of difference. Talk about the joint operating agreement from the Tribune's perspective during your tenure. Absolutely. Uh, so the, the JOA is this business contract that the Deseret News and the Salt Lake Tribune partnered up to to really economize on costs that are related to circulation, to uh, the print, the distribution, um, and advertising, of course. And so um, that was really something that's been in the works or in place since 1968. So it's been a very long time. Um, but again, you know, the negotiations have been ongoing for years. Um, both uh, newspapers, their leadership, we understood that this may or may not last forever. Um, when I became the editor in 2016, I, I told people, look, you know, we will do a print edition as long as it's financially viable. As long as we can protect the newsroom, that is our top priority, the journalism and the journalists. And so, you know, the JOA had, it, had its time, but it really is a unique partnership not many cities have had uh, two newspapers in their town for years. And so we've been spoiled in Utah a, a little bit. And I think that, you know, this is something that uh, should not be much of a surprise to the consumers out there. I'm thinking about the people who work at the presses. Does this mean that they won't have work in 2021? Um, yeah, the Deseret News owns the, the printing plant, and so um, they've decided to, to lay off those crews. I don't know what their uh, long-term plans are with that property. That's solely their decision, but it means about 160 employees will be laid off, and it's tragic. I mean, they were terrific employees. They were conscientious. They wanted to make sure that the community had this print product uh, reliably, kind of like the mail, you know, through sleet and snow and uh, dark of night. Um, so, you know, I, I, I feel for them. They were great partners with us and I wish them all the best in the world. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a deeper wound because of COVID right now. Um, Absolutely. Let's talk about the Tribune's move to your guys' nonprofit status. So given your history in public media, was this something that you guys were probably already thinking about with this funding model? Yeah, you, uh, I was hired to be editor in uh, 2016, and I do come from a public media background. Um, I broached the subject right off the bat because it had been an ongoing trend for newspapers and news organizations to explore some sort of nonprofit component. Uh, our publisher was not ready at that time. Two years later, we were ready to embrace this as a concept, and so uh, brought on an, uh, a nonprofit expert and, and to help us with this transition. We applied to the Internal Revenue Service, and uh, lo and behold, we were approved um, just about a year ago today. So I, I think that you know 
Um, this is uh, a trend that we're going to continue to see as not as uh, newspapers try and chart a course for financial viability going into the future. Yeah, newspapers I feel like are facing uh, the most changes and options that we're seeing out of all the platforms. Let's talk about the technological shift in the Tribune as well as the online and social media changes, the expansion into audio and video. How do you view these pivotal moments from traditional newspaper journalism? Well, like we heard from Boyd, I mean, we have to we have to adapt, we have to evolve and go where the audiences are. And so I think as journalists, you know, you're always trying to figure out how can we reach audience? How can we broaden the, uh, the, the audience and, and build a, a stronger relationship with those audiences? Um, so, you know, during my time as uh, executive editor, uh, we, we launched podcasts, we ventured into video, we did a lot of social media and uh, experimentation. And I, I think that that's really going to pay off because um, readers need this news and information. I do think that the community understands the unique role that local journalism has in their lives. I mean, when you want to know what's happening around the block, you don't turn into CNN. You come to stations like this one. So you want to make sure that um, it's a reliable, it's a trusted source, and that uh, your audience knows how to find you, where to find you. Yeah, I did a study on this back in college, and I found that the, the biggest challenge in this all was just the more experienced journalists trying to adapt to change. Change is hard yep. for people, right? But I mean, once you kind of get past that and you get them into it and they get comfortable, then they start to kind of grow on it. Um, anyways, uh, one last question for you. We have about 15 seconds. Real quick question for you. If you had a magic wand, same question from Boyd, what would you change or maybe do right now in the newspaper business? Um, I would just try and heighten the relationship that that consumers have with their local news and make sure that they understand there is a connection there, that they can be trusted, that they can find news and information that really will improve their lives, help their families, and help them to engage in community conversations. That's really what local news is all about. All right, folks, you've been hearing from Jennifer Napier Pierce, the former executive editor of the Salt Lake Tribune. Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Welcome back to our third and final segment of our discussion tonight. Joining us now is Matthew LaPlante. Matthew is a former reporter spending part of his career at the Salt Lake Tribune. He is currently an associate professor of journalism at Utah State University. Matt, welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Matt, talk about your time at the Salt Lake Tribune, specifically through the lens of the business side of newspapers. Uh, I was at the Tribune at a time where we were really privilege not to have to worry about the business side of things. Um, there's always a separation between newsrooms and the business interests of a paper, but truly uh, toward the um, beginning of my career and really through the time that I left the Tribune, um, the financials were good enough that we didn't have to make decisions based on what we thought was going to keep subscriptions up, what we thought was going to keep circulation up, what we thought was going to make advertisers happy. We could really purely just report the news. And, th and that's not to say that that's not still happening. There is still that separation, but there has been a looming um, economic cloud over newspapers over the last 10, 15 years that that really affects things in the newsroom. It, it, if in no other way, then it, it affects the psychology of the people who are there knowing that at any time their paper uh, could be the next one to close. I really uh, admire that because when um, I was in J school, I remember my professor telling me, like, start thinking about what the future of journalism is going to look like. And I'm thinking, what, what, why? Like, what's happening to journalism? So everything you just hit on there just resonated with me. Um, the joint operating agreement just ended here with the Deseret News and the Salt Lake Tribune. What have you seen with other JOAs in other cities? Well, there was a time there were dozens of JOAs, uh, joint operating agreements all over the country. Um, when the Salt Lake Tribune and the Desert News terminated their JOA, uh, we are now down to three. Um, there's one in Vegas, there's one in Detroit, and there's one in York, Pennsylvania. And, and that's really it. And so this, this sort of uh, setup that allowed a lot of newspapers to survive in, in two newspaper towns, like, like Salt Lake City has been for a very long time now, um, has, has shifted, has gone away, has outlived its usefulness. And, um, and so what we saw here is, is, really, um, is really the status quo of JOAs. But the, the exception is that both of these newspapers that were in this agreement are going to 
live on. They, they are going to survive, and they both have really pretty good financial models to keep them afloat in the future. I think the fact that we made it to the final four of JOAs is pretty impressive. Uh, let's talk about social media, social media's impact on journalism. What role does it play or should it play in funding of news organizations and whose content does it depend on? Um, social media relies a lot on local coverage. Uh, a lot of people say they get their, their news from Twitter, they get their news from Facebook. In reality, the content often comes from local news organizations. Um, should those uh, social media entities play a role in funding local news? I don't know. I don't know that that's um, a model that's even realistic at, that, at this time. Whether or not it, it, it's uh, morally right or ethically right, um, it, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. And so what really needs to happen is that news organizations, local news organizations, need to continue to evolve to find ways to exist in a social media world. And, and largely that is happening. We are seeing contraction in traditional news organizations, but we're si seeing a lot of innovation and we're seeing a lot of people reading news content that they don't even realize is coming from traditional news organizations, but, but they are served by it, um, and they're served by it through social media. And that's the thing. If you don't adapt, you're probably not going to survive. That's one thing that I have heard from speaking to many experienced journalists in it's the industry. It's an evolutionary law. It is. Um, the Deseret News has a strong funding source. The Tribune moved recently to nonprofit status and is now taking donations. How do you think the industry can break even or if not stay profitable? By looking for uh, avenues that are, that are appropriate for that community, wherever that paper is. So in Salt Lake City, we have a, a very influential uh, a church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, that is able to support a newspaper. That is a gift to the state of Utah in many, many ways. This, news, this town is not a two newspaper town, but for the church's decision that they were going to run a newspaper. The Salt Lake Tribune, uh, on the other hand, has looked at its niche and it said, our niche is holding, in, in no small part, that church accountable and letting people know what's going on. And to support that, they can look to readers, they can look to people all over the state and say, do you want to continue to have an independent voice? And so the model that's appropriate for the Salt Lake Tribune moving forward is that nonprofit uh, um, reader sustained newspaper. All right, we have about one minute left. I'm really curious with your role as associate professor now, what are you talking to your journalism students about right now? I know you touched on this a little bit earlier, but how are you having them think about the industry as they become aspiring journalists? Um, I, I've, I've had a lot of conversations with students over the last few days um, after the news broke about the Salt Lake Tribune and then about the Deseret News. And um, they, they are often worried, but I tell them, you know what? We are evolving, we are changing. There is, no, there is no smaller need for journalism today than there ever has been before. The way that we do news is a little bit different. The way that we, we distribute news is a little bit different. Um, but the fundamental things that we do haven't changed all that much. And in fact, today we've got more readers than ever. We've got more people who are more invested in understanding what's going on in their community than ever before. Um, and we have new models for sharing, for sharing news. Ten years ago, we didn't have thousands upon thousands of podcasts all across the country. Now we have an entire industry built up around that form of sharing information. That is journalism. That is news. And we're going to be okay. And that's what I'm telling my students. It's going to be okay. Such an insightful conversation. Matthew LaPlante, Associate Professor of Journalism at Utah State University. Matt, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My pleasure.